Well, let me start off this program with our guests in New York, and I'd like to welcome him, Mr. Caleb Mopin from the International Action Center. Thanks so much for being with us. Now, uh, even prior to this memo servicing, by, by now everyone knows that Washington led everyone uh, to war based on a lie that Saddam Hussein had uh, weapons of mass destruction. So why is George W. Bush and his accomplices still free in your perspective? Well, the first thing we need to keep in mind about the, uh, the war in Iraq was that it was just a, a continued, it was just the latest episode in a continuing effort by the United States to go in and overthrow governments that defy them and don't do what the bankers on Wall Street would like them to do. Um, you know, and it continued. Uh, uh, recent, uh, right after the election of Barack Obama, the government of Honduras was overthrown um, in, in a coup d'etat uh, the, 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 uh, that was backed by the CIA. The events in Libya, where uh, the government of, of, of Muammar Gaddafi was overthrown by, you know, by Western forces uh, supported with NATO bombs, is the same kind of thing. Uh, so continually, there's an effort. Whenever some government stands up to the will of the bankers and the corporations, the response of Washington, D.C. and Wall Street is to bomb and destroy. And they justify this, this, this imperialism, essentially, and, and, and war for profits. They justify that always with talk of democracy. They're always doing it because they, you know, they care so much about democracy and freedom. But then it's pretty apparent they don't really believe in those ideals because they're torturing people, as this memo has shown. And in addition, uh, you know, the governments that they support around the world who do obey corporations are, are, are hardly, hardly democratic forces at all. Uh, you know, the government that, that, was, that replaced the Honduran democratically elected government of Manuel Zelaya, uh, the government that replaced it was, was a military dictatorship. Uh, you know, in Libya, the forces, the forces that have replaced uh, Gaddafi's government are going around massacring people so badly that even doctors without borders will not associate with them because they're engaging in such horrendous acts of torture. The idea that the U.S., you know, just out of the goodness of its heart cares and, it, you know, invades countries because it just cares so much is such a falsehood. The U.S. the U.S. military, the Pentagon, they all work for the bankers and the corporations, and their end is to conquer, is to conquer, to bring profits to the banks, to bring profits to Wall Street, and and to keep the rest of the world enslaved so that they can continue making profits. That's what that's about. And and so whenever we hear them, you know, demonizing some government abroad, we need to be suspicious because any any time they label a government as undemocratic or they label a government as terrorist or supporting terrorism, we need to remember it's coming from the mouths of the greatest terrorists in the world. The, the U.S. corporations and the bankers, they're the greatest terrorists in the world. Whenever they, they accuse someone of being undemocratic, they're the most undemocratic forces in the world. Okay, but so, Mr. Mopin, so you, you're they, saying, they let me just jump in here. What you're saying is that it was a continuation, the war in Iraq, a continuation, and uh, what we have seen since that time, for example, the involvement, uh, as you said, in Honduras or Libya, or perhaps even now as we're speaking in Syria, is a continuation of that process. But the question is then, then where are the checks and balances internationally? Is it that the United States uh, can just get away with whatever it wants? Where is the international checks and balances then? Well, the international check and balance that can be established is the, glo is the rising global movement. Occupy Wall Street has made clear it supports the people all around the world that are struggling against the bankers and the corporation. And the growing alliance between people, people in every country that are, that are defying the imperialists, whether it's in Venezuela, whether it's in Cuba, Bolivia, you know, uh, uh, Iran, Syria, wherever people are struggling and defying the imperialists, there needs to be an alliance because the main enemy of humanity is on Wall Street. The bankers and the corporations are the main enemy of humanity. And if we're going to restrain them, it's going to take a global movement, a united struggle you know, against these bankers and these corporations. And that's, what, that's, that's, that's the glorious thing. People need to be in the streets, and they are increasingly in the streets, demanding that this, this end. And uh, the, the, the Wall Street corporations that, that continue these wars, uh, you know, they, are the same, they are the same enemy of working class people in the United States who are having their jobs their jobs shipped over, shipped somewhere else where people will work for lower wages. The same, uh, you know, the same, you know, corporations that are foreclosing on their houses and, and causing mass evictions and for home foreclosures throughout the U.S. They're the same enemies. It's the same enemy and, and a, a global alliance between workers in the U.S. and working class people abroad and all abroad who are defying the will of the banks and the corporations. That's the check and balance okay. that needs to be created.